Another long flight, and next stop for the Kazakhstan nomads is Colombo, Sri Lanka, also known as the Pearl of the Indian Ocean. Travelling from Kazakhstan is never easy, and this journey is no different. The team fly to Dubai, where they get stuck for 14 hours. The group is then split up, with one half flying direct to Colombo, and the other half flying through the Maldives. This means that a journey which normally takes about 14 hours has taken the lads 48 hours and they arrive in Colombo the day before the biggest game in Kazakhstani rugby history. It's a stifling afternoon in Colombo, and having arrived only three hours previously, the jet lag nomads are whisked off to a training session. The preparations, as always, haven't been ideal. Um, in fact, they've probably been worse than ever before. A couple of the players are on strike because basically they're not getting any help uh, financially or otherwise. And um, as a result, we actually lost our captain. None of the guys really realise how big a game it is, you know, or what's at stake, and that you know, if they if they play even better and they were to win this game, that they would be into the next round of World Cup qualifiers, and then they could, you know, start saying, well, look, improve our facilities, give us more. We need this, we need that, if we want to go further. Um, at the moment, we haven't really done anything. We haven't proven anything. Definitely in men's rugby, this is the biggest game. They don't come bigger than this. It's the World Cup qualifiers. And for a lot of the players, um, it could be their last game for Kazakhstan if we don't win. Looking to get their campaign back on track, England World Cup winners Jason Robinson and Johnny Wilkinson made their first start. Back at the hotel, the lads finally get a chance to unwind and do so by watching a DVD of that fateful Lions tour to New Zealand. I mean, you look at the Lions, they're all professional players and they had like four weeks together down in New Zealand. They had training camps before that, they had like 30 coaches. They couldn't get the team to gel together. The players didn't understand what they wanted from each other. And we certainly, with the circumstances and facilities that we have, I mean, there's no way it's going to happen for us overnight. The boys eventually get a good night's sleep and as dawn breaks over Colombo, Luke looks forward to today's game. So today is the 12th of November, we're playing Sri Lanka today in Colombo. It's about two and a half hours to kick off time. It's the biggest game we've ever played. Um, there's a lot at stake and there's a lot of nerves going around, actually a lot more nerves than in any of the other games we've played. So it's pretty tense at the moment, it's pretty intense actually. The players believe they can win, I mean, I wouldn't say they were confident, but they, they believe that they can win because we've beaten them. We've beaten them every time we've played them. All the players are focused, but Kazakhstan go into this crucial game with the reluctant captain. The team arrive at the stadium and make their way to the dressing room. Luke is once again disappointed to be left out of the starting lineup. I've been unlucky to be left out of the starting 15 today and Valeri had a quiet word with me about it this morning and just said, you know, he opted for a different player just for different reasons, tactical reasons. And that's okay, I mean, I'm okay with that. Um, we have to play, we have to put out the best team that we have. Um, but if I get a chance, I'm going to take it, you know, I'm going to just go at it full throttle. <laughs> Although a reluctant captain, Sheshin makes a good stab at rising the troops. While Popov prefers the silent approach. There's a lot to play for, and, I, and I'd like to see players step up to that. They haven't stepped up yet, and that's what I'm worried about. I'm wondering, are they going to step up today? Are they going to take their chance? 
or are they just going to, you know, fight amongst themselves and then afterwards say, no, could have been, should have been, I mean, be kicking themselves. If we don't win this, it's only ourselves to blame, really. Luke's concerns about Kazakhstan's poor preparations seem to be well-founded. When the game kicks off in Colombo, it soon becomes clear that the Sri Lankans mean business. They did their homework, they planned, they trained. Um, they played very, very well. Um, they really thought about what they were doing. Despite the colourful local support, the Kazakhstan boys were not going to give up without a fight. And this try gave them a two-point lead approaching half-time. But the pivotal moment of the match came with Vanya, ironically playing in Luke's position, had what could only be described as a rush of blood to the head. He said somebody kicked him, so he started a fight and there was... <laughs> The crowd were on the pitch. Um, he was in the crowd fighting with people. Uh, it was absolute chaos. Um, just pure stupidity. It's still not half time, and Vanya's dismissal leaves the boys with a mountain to climb. And the way things are going, they'll be lucky if Vanya is the only one to see red. The second half begins and Sri Lanka pick up from where they left off. For some of the elder statesmen on the team, it's all beginning to take its toll. When the coach introduces Luke and some of the younger players, things start to turn around. But in the end, it's not enough. And unfortunately for Kazakhstan, they are out of the World Cup. As the Sri Lankans celebrate their passage to the next round, the Kazakhstan boys are left to rue what might have been. For some of the players, it's the end of the road as far as international rugby is concerned. I mean, the World Cup is every four years. I mean, um, they didn't make it this time, but they could make it next time. When one great scorer comes to write against your name, he writes not that you won or lost, but how you play the game. Play fair, cheer the victor. On the vanquished.